Hi, good morning, church. Here are the announcements for this morning. This coming week is Pentecost Sunday, and we will worship live outside in the back lot. We're excited to welcome our very own Dr. Drew Hart to bring the word. So bring your chairs, bring your mask and your enthusiasm and be ready for a special day in the life of our church. Pentecost begins a string of three successive weeks in which we will have live worship in the back lot. The last of these three weeks, which is going to be on June 6, we're going to look forward to welcoming the Reverend John Brenneman, who will bring forth the morning message for us. Coming up are the local elections, and they will be coming up this week, so on Tuesday, May 18th. If you need help finding your polling location or being sure of your voting status, please feel free to contact Alyssa or Pastor Josiah about this. This year's local elections include the mayoral, the school board, and even the city council, as well as three very important constitutional amendments, as well as one referendum. So definitely please make sure to go out and vote. Links to these issues will be in the description. So get prepared and show up to vote on May 18th. Our spring council meeting is coming up and will take place on June 6th at 2.30 via Zoom. The meeting is open to all who attend the church and members are able to vote on business items. This will be a very important meeting to attend as we will discuss the upcoming worship plans and moving forward with any recommendations that the search committee has for us at that time. So we will hear about also several grants and are hoping to receive as well some restructuring of the community ministries BCM piece. The virtual Highmark Walk for, healthy, for a Healthy Community is underway, and we invite everyone to participate as a virtual walker. So come out and walk. Attending our virtual events and even raising funds for our community ministries for BCM Peace. This is a very important fundraiser, and we need everyone to participate. More information is available and can be found at bcmpeace.org. Finally, the First Church Kids Day is coming up this Saturday, May 22nd from 10 to 11.30 a.m. You won't want to miss it. The time will include Bible lessons, some crafts, some games outside on the back parking lot. We will hold one such event monthly over the summer. This is our COVID-adjusted replacement for Vacation Bible School. Kids are to be masked and accompanied by a responsible adult. So please RSVP to the church email by May 19th, which is on a Wednesday. So now let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Praise the Lord in our living rooms, and uh, we hope that, um, that, that you're all doing well. As we sing this first song, uh, we want to encourage you to greet each other in the chat. Uh, this is a, a good old hymn that I think Ade introduced to us uh, months ago. It just talks about how we don't have to know everything right now. One day we will understand everything, but for now, let's just trust God and, and recognize that there are going to be storms and stuff, but if we hold on to Him, Everything is going to be all right. So let's uh, let's praise the Lord as we sing. By and by, when the Lord comes.
Lord, and let them stand that way and let us see the Lord, God. Now, Lord, we ask that you touch them in the name of Jesus, God. Lord, we ask that you touch this world. Hallelujah, God. Oh, God, put all that we're going through right now, but Father God, we know that you're able. God, we know that you're able. We depend upon you, Father God. We don't depend on men because we know that men will let us down. But God, the songwriter picked up the pen and said, Jesus never fell. That's right. Hallelujah. So we thank you and praise you for that, Father God. Now, God, I ask that you touch each and every one right now, Father God. Oh, God, just bless us right now in your precious, in your precious, in your precious and holy name, Jesus. We say amen. 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 Praise God.
Yeah. 
worship the Lord as, as we scoop in and we recognize uh, the freedom that the Spirit gives us. We experience uh, freedom from the chains of sin, freedom from, from uh, the bondage that we sometimes choose for ourselves. And when we gather together to praise the Lord, there is joy in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord the praise today and recognize the joy that we're feeling as we're together. There's a river that's flowing. And we want to swim in those waters of laughter today. Let's have some fun praising the Lord, church. Hallelujah. Bring his people together to bring his 
his creation together. That's that's what he created us to, to do, to have a relationship with him and a relationship with each other. And even though it might seem impossible for that to ever happen, with as divided as we are even just within our own country, we know that God's able to do exceedingly abundantly more than we can ever ask for a Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Lord, we claim it in your name today. We pray that you'll just do what you want to do in our lives. Thank you, Lord. Anything's possible with you, Lord God. And uh, we just thank you that you're still at work in us and among us. We just pray that that um, we don't give up. You haven't give up, given up on us, and we know that you're able to overcome anything. We know that you're able to, to bless us exceedingly and abundantly above all we could ask or think, anything we could imagine. We just thank you, Lord, for your power. We thank you, Lord, for your love and your desire for us to be in relationship with you and in relationship with each other. Lord, we just love you and we thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray.
Trust in Him, amazing things can happen. He's got some sign language in it too, so try it with me. Trust in the Lord with all your heart And lean not on your own understanding In all your ways acknowledge Him he will make your path straight. Try it with me. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him. He will make your path straight. So a straight path through dark night. You got a clean line of sight. Your head is clear. Your future's bright. Everything will be all right. We trust in the Lord with all our hearts and lean not on our own understanding. If all our ways will acknowledge Him, He will make our path straight. So trust God with all your ways. He'll guide you all your days. He will renew your strength as you walk this road of faith. So just trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him. He will make your path straight. Just trust in the Lord with all your heart And lean not on your own understanding In all your ways acknowledge Him He will make your path straight He will make your path Well, after the exciting news about the Holy Spirit coming to help everyone, Jesus started teaching his friends how to stay close to him too, even when he's in heaven. 
We can stay close to Jesus by talking to Him, listening to Him, and obeying Him by doing the things He was teaching. Jesus explained this by talking about a plant. First, He said that He is like a grapevine growing in a garden. His friends, that's us, are like the branches. God is like the gardener who comes out and helps make sure those branches are healthy and strong, growing juicy, delicious grapes. Think about what will happen if a branch falls off a grapevine. It's not going to be able to grow any grapes laying on the dirty ground. Instead, spiders and ants will come live in it, people will step on it, and it might become a bathroom for birds. So basically, we, the branches, need to be connected to Jesus, the vine, if we're going to be healthy disciples. That means we should talk to Jesus, listen to Him, and obey Him, even when we don't feel like it. We have to stay close to Jesus to be His followers. After all this garden talk, Jesus wanted to make sure the disciples knew how to pray. So He prayed and showed them that prayer is really just talking to God. Remember kids, Jesus loves all of us so much that He wants us to stay close to Him, just like His disciples. Staying close to Jesus doesn't just mean knowing stuff about Him. It means knowing Him like a friend by talking to Him, listening to Him, and showing that we love Him by obeying what He teaches. So this video talked about being disciples of Jesus and the gift of the Holy Spirit and what it means to stay tied onto the vine and to grow as a follower of Jesus. Did you know that before Jesus died and then went back up to heaven, the Holy Spirit did not live in each person? and was not available to guide and to speak to each person. The Holy Spirit actually just fell on people and influenced them and spoke through them for a period of time and then left. And it's only after Jesus' death and resurrection that the Holy Spirit was available to all believers. So this week, I want you to think about the Holy Spirit and what the Spirit means in your life and to practice listening to the Spirit. And what does that look like? Because next week we're going to learn about Pentecost Sunday when he actually came down as was made available to all of us believers in Jesus. I hope you have a great week and we'll just bow in prayer. Jesus, thank you for the gift of your life and your example, but also the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that now we can be in communion with you and we can have your influence and your power in our lives at all times. I pray for each person um, in our church family and also each person that we are around that we may learn from them and grow and show your love. And pray all these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Have a good week. Hi, church. Daniel Wright here. I'll be doing the scripture reading today. It's John 17, 6 through 19 from the New International Version. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me and they accepted them. They knew with certainty I came from you and they believe that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine, and glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them by the power of your name, the name that you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by the name that you gave me. None have been lost except the one doomed to destruction, so that scripture would be fulfilled. I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world, so that they may have full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. 
and you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they may too be truly sanctified. Good morning, church. It's so good to be here with you this morning, and thank you to Daniel for reading the scripture for this morning. I am blessed to be bringing you the word, even though it was short notice, I decided I would do a little something. I have been sitting with this passage, and I'm excited to share what God has placed on my heart. We find the scripture in John um, chapter 16, where Jesus is praying prior to his arrest. Now I just want us to sit with that for a second. Jesus prayed. Was he on his knees, head down, and cupped hands like we learn when we were children? How powerful that image is. Now we all remember what we know is the shortest verse in the Bible, it's John 11, 35, Jesus wept. And how powerful that, even that short verse is. And I feel this is powerful in the same way. The way we say Jesus prayed, Jesus wept. It's that vulnerability and that humanity that connects us that connects us to Jesus on a very real level. But not only that, we know that he's praying for himself to be glorified and to be used by God. And for us, his disciples, and even for the believers that the disciples will bring to him. As I sat on this and as I was reflecting on this passage, I began to write. So I'd like to share with you this poem I wrote based on this passage. Why us? We are merely sheep made strong, yet we are chosen and loved by the creator of all. He chose us. We were of this world and he still chose us. He chose tax collectors and betrayers. He chose us to teach. We learn to trust and obey. They say that there's no other way, but there is. There's always a choice to be made. Good or bad, right or wrong, we have to choose to listen and to learn. We have to choose to follow. We have to choose to let you lead. Jesus prays, I pray for them. I'm not praying for the world. This world is not worth praying for, but us, that's the sweet spot. It is not the world that shares this perfection of a love worth dying for, that's us. We are special. Rooted in a soil made of pure gold, sprouting up just in time for a miracle. We are fed by sunlight, warm like the embrace of our Father and the grace and mercy we have been given through him. Waters of peace quench our thirst, giving us the opportunity to grow. We bloom. Even in the strongest storms, our leaves sway to the rhythm of the thunder and we rejoice with the rain. For the lightning reminds us of the light. The dark clouds remind us of the storms we made it through, and because we are rooted in the spirit, we can withstand thousands. We are special because of you. We are called. We cannot be complacent. We must call out the oppressors, flip the tables of the wicked. The world is falling. But we are the heroes in this story, powered by our Father's glory. Our climate crisis, our inability to empathize, our selfish individualism and competitive boasting, these are of this world, turning what once was art into a shell. We are called to be used. Oh, the weight on our shoulders to be the middlemen of glory. How do we know if we're doing it right? Is there a right way? Because we may be rooted in gold, but how do others see us? Is that gold reflecting glitter in the eyes of the broken? When we look at people, do they see the storms we've weathered and the smile that comes after? Do they see our grace and the gratitude and the glory in our hands? Do they see you when they look at us? You say we are in this world, but not of it. For our purpose rises higher than planes can fly and telescopes can see. We are molded and formed by something greater. We are held together by the destinies and the stars that you wrote for us. And we are bound in spirit as you are one with our Father. We have gifts unmatched and passion that parts seas and faith that moves mountains. 
We are not of this world and they know it. We are tested and tried, punished and forgotten, but you, you seek us out. You seek us out and we are made yours. We are protected by your might from the evil one, the one who plagues this world we fight to protect. As kingdoms enslaved, we wear the armor of believers. And as wars are waged, we strike with swords of compassion and knowledge. We are protected by the word, for the word is truth. The word is sweet like honey and sticks like it too. It is filling like the bread that was broken for us and as strong as the wine that was poured out. Your word is shocking and uneasy. We quiver and protest, but we knew, we believe. We believe that your love is unconditional. We believe that you are this love exemplified. We believe that God sent you for us. We believe that we don't deserve the grace and mercy we have been given, but we believe that we have the power within us to create a new world, a world of a beloved community where these systems uphold love and justice instead of violence and divisiveness. We believe, but what else? In verse 20, he prays, my prayer is not for them alone. I pray for those who will believe in me through their message. How beautiful to pray for those who are simply going to believe. Those in, who in the future will be brought to him through us. How many times do we pray for those who are yet to find solace and love in Christ? How often do we assist but also give the glory to God? Jesus prayed. Jesus prayed for us. He prayed that we would continue to build his kingdom. I ask you, church, how are we doing? How are we reserving seats at the table for the least, last, and lost? How are each of you individually doing? How are all of us doing? I'm often lacking in action, I believe, but I don't always feel the need to share. Oh, I'm too pushy. Or, oh, Christianity has some baggage, so I gotta be careful. I fill my mind as I look into the faces I serve. Those that have crossed my path for a reason. I pray on how I can be a better disciple. How can I listen better? How can I trust more? How do I make sure that he is glorified in all that I do? A disciple is not a stationary title, but evolving and growing through the calling. Jesus prayed, his hopes for us on his lips, are they not powerful? We are not of this world, but we are in it. And it's up to us to make sure that this world is glorified and the power in his name is felt in masses. Jesus prayed. He knew what was next to come and he prayed for us still. What are we to do with that church? Please pray with me. Lord, you prayed for us. A simple act that somehow means so much that you took the time to f for us to think of us as we do your will. The humility and the grace we are given by your name. Lord, continue to have us be your true disciples. May we spread the words that come from you, Lord. May these words sweet like honey find themselves in everything we do, everything we say. May they roll off our tongue. Lord, may you continue to be with us. Sometimes it's hard. We don't have you here to continue to teach us. So sometimes we fall short. But Lord, you keep our head up and you have hope in us. And that means a lot for a lot of us. But Lord, as we continue to do your work and we continue to be disciples and share your message, stay with us. In your name we pray, amen.
Lord, just as you prayed, let us pray. Lord, we pray for unity. We pray for peace and love and justice to prevail. We pray that us as your disciples are doing your work and sharing your glory. We pray that your prayers have been answered and we pray that we're doing well, we're doing a good job. Lord, we continue to pray for peace in this country, in this world. Lord, we pray for your light and your goodness to prevail. And we pray for each and every one of us to continue to do your will. And in your name, amen. Go in peace, church.